If you asked anyone after the 2016 NFL season, they'd probably say Odell Beckham Jr. is a lock for the Hall of Fame and was on pace to maybe be the greatest wide receiver ever. Just four years later, we're at a point where Odell has missed a significant amount of time in the past four seasons, and all of a sudden the talk of him being the best wide receiver of all time seems very far-fetched. Reports have recently surfaced that Odell may have played his last game in Cleveland, and at barely 28 years old, it's almost a harsh reality that we'll never see that same Odell from a half decade ago. Injuries are the clear answer, but let's dive into Odell's career starting with the first three seasons where he was top three at his position, to present day where he is struggling to stay healthy and putting up those staggering numbers that he once did. Odell was a big riser in the 2014 draft process, and the Giants scouts were enamored by the young LSU receiver to take him 12th overall in the draft. Beckham as a junior put up over 1,100 yards and 8 touchdowns, and based on that and his impressive combine numbers, it was enough for Big Blue to invest a first round pick in him. The Giants had Victor Cruz, but outside of him, they didn't really have another wide receiver one on the roster, and the hope was that both guys can one day be one of the best wide receiver duos for a long time. Beckham didn't play until week 5 of his rookie season due to a hamstring injury, but even in his first game against Atlanta, he showed he was already special. He caught his first touchdown pass on a jump ball, and from there on out, he absolutely absolutely took the league by storm. A couple weeks later, he caught two touchdowns in Dallas, and from that point on, he had an insane nine-game stretch where he never had under 90 yards in a single game. His real breakout game came in prime time against the Colts, where he put up eight catches for 156 yards. Three weeks later on Sunday Night Football, Odell's life changed forever and immediately became a rock star after catching a touchdown pass with essentially only three fingers and possibly the greatest catch in NFL history. It was such a great catch to the point where he was put in a song by Drake, and all of a sudden everyone knew who Odell Beckham Jr. was. And it wasn't just one catch or his swagger or the hairstyle that was easy to spot from a mile away, it was his play on the field that really did the talking. After rattling off those 9 straight games of over 90 yards or more, Odell finished his rookie campaign in 12 games with 91 catches, 1,305 yards, and 12 touchdowns. Not only are those stats unheard of for a rookie receiver, but keep in mind that he made his debut in Week 5, he literally did all of that in 12 games. Beckham took home Offensive Rookie of the Year honors, and although the Giants did not make the playoffs, it looked like they found the next great wide receiver in football. In 2015, it was mostly the same. Beckham did play in 15 games, putting up 96 catches catches, 1,450 yards, and 13 touchdowns. Beckham had 8 games of over 100 yards receiving and a career-long 87-yard touchdown catch against New England, who even tried to double-team him the whole game with a safety over the top, but even that was not enough. The Giants didn't miss the playoffs again, but they were more competitive in the 2016 season. The Giants improved their defense and added key free agents to go 11-5 in 2016. Beckham completely carried a struggling Giants offense that had no identity and an aging quarterback and Eli Manning that was starting to decline. In year three, Beckham put up great numbers again with 101 catches, 1,367 receiving yards, and 10 touchdowns. In his first three seasons, Beckham put up over 90 catches, 1,300 yards, and 10 or more touchdowns in each season, which is is arguably the greatest start to a career for a wide receiver in NFL history. Here are some of the records that the wideout broke in his first three years. Mind you, he was only 24 years old at the time. He broke the NFL record for being the only player with at least 80 receptions and over 1,000 yards in each of his first three seasons. He was one of three players in NFL history to have over 10 touchdowns in each of his first three seasons. Through his first 50 games played, this is where he placed in the most important receiving categories. He had the most receptions of all time with 337, second in yards only trailing Lance Allworth, sixth in receiving touchdowns, and tied for the most 100-yard games with 21 out of 50 games played. By the 2017 offseason, he was truly on pace to be the greatest receiver of all time. Now, of course, he was unlucky with injuries in the future, or you could be the superstitious type and believe that he was never the same player after the infamous boat trip in 2016 before Wild Card Weekend. In Beckham's one and only playoff game up until this point of his career, he had a few major drops and eventually got blown out by Green Bay on the road. Beckham apparently punched a hole in a wall after the loss, so obviously he cared, but partying in Miami the Monday before a playoff game did not sit right with some people. Even his teammate at the time, Victor Cruz, admitted this was the biggest regret of his career. In the 2017 preseason, Beckham injured his ankle in a game at Cleveland, which caused him to miss week one of the regular season. He did return in week two, but was on a limited snap count. 
In weeks 3, 4, and 5, Beckham looked like his old self, putting up over at least 79 yards in each game and scoring 3 touchdowns in 3 games. Unfortunately, Beckham suffered a season-ending ankle injury against the Los Angeles Chargers and would not be seen until the 2018 season. The expectation was that Beckham would return in 2018 and be the same guy, and while that was true, the injury started to pile up from there on out. Odell opened up the 2018 season with 11 receptions for 111 yards, so Beckham seemed good to go. He did seem back, and despite the offense looking awful and Eli Manning not looking much better, Beckham in 2018 had 5 games of over 100 yards but didn't miss the final 4 games of the season with an oblique injury. He finished that 12 game season with 77 catches, 1,052 yards, and 6 touchdowns. Week 13's win over Chicago would end up being Beckham's last game as a giant as he was traded in the offseason in exchange for Jabril Peppers and 2 draft picks. Odell was definitely not thrilled about the trade to Cleveland, later saying that the Giants sent me here to die, but on the bright side he was reuniting with his old college teammate and best friend Jarvis Landry, as well as playing with 2018's first overall pick, Baker Mayfield, who just came off a season where he broke the rookie touchdown record. The hype was at an all-time high for this Browns team entering 2019, but they did not live up to it. Beckham did injure himself in August and got surgery after the season, but played in all 16 games, putting up 74 catches, 1,035 yards, and 4 touchdowns. The Browns went 6-10 that season, and nothing seemed to click consistently, whether it was the chemistry, terrible play calling, or the offensive line play, which was also disappointing. After the season, Beckham did have core surgery and looked to rehab and bounce back for what was hoped to be a big 2020 season. The Browns improved their offensive line and hired a good new head coach, so Baker and Odell's chemistry was the only thing standing in the way. Beckham put up a dud in week 1 on 10 targets, but would end up bouncing back the next few weeks with over 58 yards in 4 straight games, as well as 3 touchdowns against the Dallas Cowboys. Week 6 at Pittsburgh was an ugly showing for the Browns, and Beckham was seen in the 4th quarter with his cleats off and arguing with Pittsburgh Steelers fans. Week 7, as we know, is where Odell's season would come to an end, as he tore his ACL chasing down a Bengals defensive back after an interception that was targeted for Odell himself. The news came out that it was a very severe injury, but the next day, the fear for the worst was confirmed. Not only is Odell's career in Cleveland in doubt, but based on his personality type and cryptic treats about not loving football anymore, does he decide that he doesn't really need football going forward? I'm not saying he will retire, but it wouldn't shock me either. Odell was one of the most electrifying and explosive players the game has ever seen, and being a Giants fan, I absolutely adored him. As I mentioned, he just turned 28, so in terms of age, he should have years left in the NFL, but based on his endorsement, and NFL earnings, football is probably not a necessity for him anymore. Beckham through seven seasons has 6,830 receiving yards and 52 total touchdowns, so if he came back and played at a high level, he could absolutely end up in Canton, but based on recent events, it'd be tough to imagine, honestly. I love the guy and want him to succeed, so hopefully he does it, and hopefully for his sake, he ends up on a team that fits his skill set and gets the most out of his talent. He was on pace to be the best, but based on the past four years, his chances of getting into Canton is on life support. I'll be rooting for you, Odell. Best of luck.